welcome to week one, day number two. Uh, I'm Mr. Roll, and I'm here with Miss Martell, our first grade teacher. Hi. So first, before we begin our day, a couple quick announcements. In week one, day one, we tried our very best to have a very long explanation how to get to every single file and every single Khan Academy video or any other video that our teachers were using in the lesson. Starting today, however, we are not going to have long explanations for every cut uh, when we go to a different video or when we go to a different lesson online. You need to make sure that you have the day's list of links in front of you and click through the links in order so that you can go to the next video. Again, yesterday we had a good time explaining everything and, and taking a, a long time to do that. But today we're going to streamline it and make it go a little bit faster. So everybody needs to have the list of links in front of them so you can go to the next part of your lesson. All right, uh, that's it for today's announcements. Uh, I wanted to talk for just a moment about Mrs. Martell's award-winning SARSEFT first place uh, science fair project. Uh, Ms. Martell, can you tell us a little bit about what you and your first grade class did to win first prize at SARSEFT? Yeah, so the first thing we did was we talked about our body and how we have joints in them. So just in case you don't remember, joints are those little things that help your fingers bend and your whole, anything that bends, that's what's in there. So we created a model hand, we called it our robot hand, Whoa. and it was able to move when we did that. That's really cool. Yeah, and then we had a whole experiment to see how long it would take to do stuff like write our name without, with using our joints and then without, and we did a couple of other things too. So, Ms. Martell, that's so cool. Thank you for sharing. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, at this time, it's time for our uh, uh, joke of the day and our Pledge of Allegiance. So, Ms. Martell, go ahead. Right. What do you call fake pasta? I don't know, Ms. Martell. What do you call fake pasta? An impasta. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> Get it? Because it's like an imposter, but impasta. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good times. Ms. Martell, if you would, please, let's go ahead and say our Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Stand at attention, place your right hand over your heart, and let's begin. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Ms. Martell. Uh, all right, I guess it's time for us to all get to our classes. We'll see you in a minute. Bye. Bye. Welcome back to week one, day two of Mrs. Lee's online school program. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. You're already making progress. If for any reason you're having any problems, remember also that you can make outreach to me at clee at davincitree.academy or call me anytime. I'll help you work through those. But if you're here today, I'm assuming you're doing great. So let's continue on. Let's talk about today's agenda. First of all, we have vocabulary. It's the same word set as yesterday, okay? But we're gonna talk a little bit more about it and do some different activities. Next, we have grammar. We're gonna learn more about parts of speech today. We're moving on from nouns, and we're gonna talk about singular and plural nouns. Then we have some math. We're gonna estimate with multiplication. Again, uh, just a little bit more review for you, and some reading. Now, for my boys and girls, I know you're dying to find out what happens to Percy Jackson in The Lightning Thief. On our last day of class, I left you on a cliffhanger, and you guys have been hanging for far too long. So let's find out. I'm so excited to get started. Let's do this. All right, time for some vocabulary. As we listed before, our following spelling words are wolf, wolves, loaf, loaves, library, libraries, child, and children. 
For today, your assignment is to take the first word, wolf, and you're going to write a web word and expand your knowledge and understanding of the word. Again, these two set, this set of words is actually the same word. Wolves is plural for wolf, which is singular. One wolf, many wolves. So your word of the day is wolf. I have an online worksheet for you to print out. So you're going to do that. I will give how to step-by-step -step instructions on the main site for fourth and fifth grade. All you have to do is follow along and print out that lovely word web. It'll look pretty much like this, except it won't be filled in. You're going to take this word, wolf, or the variant wolves, Put it in the center and then fill out each bubble, okay, as indicated. For example, the word I have chosen is knife. That goes in the center. Then I've looked up a definition for knife. My definition is a sharp object used for cutting. I will also look up the PS, which stands for part of speech. Remember, a part of speech is uh, a word category, right? And there are eight different ones, and you guys should, again, all be familiarized with all of this. Noun, for example, a verb, an adjective, an adverb. Those are all parts of speech. So we want to know what category the word is. So the part of speech will change depending upon the meaning of the word and how that word is used within the sentence. So in this particular case, knife is a noun. The next bubble is synonym followed by antonym. Okay, so again, after you have the definition and the parts of speech, you can go to synonym or antonym. Sometimes synonyms are listed for you there in the dictionary, or you can use a thesaurus. Okay, a synonym, again, is a word that is similar or related to this word. Okay, it's going to be something very similar, maybe not the exact same, but something very close. In this case, what I thought of was sword. Sword is similar or related to knife, could be used for cutting, okay? Um, it is certainly a sharp object. Um, and an antonym, which would be the opposite or unrelated, okay? Well, I put a spoon. Now, a spoon is a utensil, just like a knife, but certainly it's not a sharp object, and it's certainly not used for cutting. Okay, so it's not exact, but do your best, all right? And then the very last thing I'll have you do on our word web is go ahead and write it out in a sentence. Notice the underlined word, the key word being knife, is used differently in my sentence. Why? I have used the plural form in my sentence. Let's go ahead and read it. The knives were secured in a safe place. Knives. Well, it's the same word as knife. It's many knives. It's more than one. It's the plural form of knife. I had one knife. He had many knives. The knives were secured in a safe place. So it's all right if you use the singular or plural form, which is why I have underlined both, because your word for the day is wolf. All right. You're going to look up wolf. You're going to provide a synonym, an antonym, a part of speech, a definition, and a sentence. You may use wolves in your sentence if you would like because it is a form of that original word. All right. Have fun with that. And then also, I want you to today write out each word in a sentence. Have fun, and I'll see you back tomorrow.
Hi guys, for my fourth and fifth graders, we are returning now to the lightning thief. So currently, we are on chapter 15, page 234. So Quite a bit has happened, and I left my fourth and fifth graders on a cliffhanger, literally on the edge of their seats, wanting to know what was going to happen next. But for those of you who are new to us, who may be unfamiliar with this story, The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan, Riordan is a fantastic adventure or quest novel, okay? The main character, who is Percy Jackson, is on a quest to retrieve a lightning bolt for one of the Greek, and I use quotes here for God, little g slash d, okay? For those of you who uh, don't want to be offensive. Again, this is a fiction book, guys. So it's using fiction um, and creating this tale. Okay, and Percy Jackson is using magic and he's using the help of these fictional Greek gods, little g slash ds, to help him on his quest to retrieve this lightning bolt. He has gone through a series of trials and tribulations to try and um, retrieve this master bolt. Uh, in doing so, he has found out who his father was. He is son of Poseidon, okay, who is master of the water, okay? So he rules the water world, uh, supposedly. And, and at one point in time in our history, many, many people actually did believe in these figureheads, these little G slash DS. Currently, it's just fiction, and it's just a really fun read. Um, we talk about this in terms of magic and make-believe. And so we are following along with Percy and his friends um, on this magical adventure. So we are so glad that you have joined us. So again, we are on page 234, The Lightning Thief. Let's get started. I picked up the scarf. It shimmered pink, and the perfume, oh, it was indescribable. Rose or mountain laurel, something good. I smiled, a little dreamy, and was about to rub the scarf against my cheek when Annabeth ripped it out of my hand and stuffed it in her pocket. Oh, no, you don't. Stay away from that love magic. What? Just get the shield, seaweed brain. And let's get out of here. The moment I touched the shield, I knew we were in trouble. My hand broke through something that had been connecting it to the dashboard, a cobweb, I thought. But then I looked at a strand of it on my palm and saw it was some kind of metal filament, so fine it was almost invisible. A trip wire. Wait, Annabeth said. Too late. There's another Greek letter on the side of the boat. Another Ada. <gasps> it's a trap. Noise erupted all around us. A million gears grinding as if the whole pole were turning into one giant machine. Grover yelled, <gasps> Guys! Up on the rim, the Cupid statues were drawing their bows into firing position. Before I could suggest taking cover, they shot but not at us. They fired at each other, across the rim of the pool. Silky cables trailed from the arrows, arcing over the pool and anchoring where they landed to form a huge golden asterisk. The smaller metallic threads started weaving together magically between the main strands, making a net. We have to get out, I said. <laughs> Duh, said Annabeth. I grabbed the shield and we ran, but going up the slope of the pool was not as easy as going down. Come on, bleated Grover. He was trying to hold open a section of the net for us, but wherever he touched it, the golden threads started to wrap around his hands. The Cupid's head popped open. Out came video cameras, 
Spotlights rose up all around the pool, blinding us with illumination, and a loudspeaker voice boomed. Live to Olympus, in one minute, 59 seconds, 58. <gasps> Hephaestus, Annabeth screamed. <gasps> Oi, I'm so stupid. Era is H. <gasps> ah, Eta is H. He made this trip to catch his wife with Aries. <gasps> now we're going to be broadcast live to Olympus and look like absolute fools. Oh. We'd almost made it to the rim when the row of m mirrors opened like hatches and thousands of tiny metallic things poured out. Annabeth screamed. It was an army of wind-up creepy crawlies, bronze gear bodies, spindly legs, little pincer mouths, all scuttling toward us in a wave of clacking, whirling metal. Ah! Spiders! Annabeth screeched. And I'd never seen her face like that before. She fell backward in terror and almost got overwhelmed by the spider robots before I pulled her up and dragged her back toward the boat. The things were coming out from all around the rain now, millions of them, flooding toward the center of the pool, completely surrounding us. I told myself they probably weren't programmed to kill us, just corral us, bite us, maybe just make us look stupid. Then again, this was a trap meant for gods, and we weren't little G-O-D-S. Annabeth and I climbed into the boat. I started kicking away the spiders as they swarmed aboard. I yelled at Annabeth to help me, but she was too paralyzed to do much more than scream. 30, 29, called the loudspeaker. The spiders started spitting out strands of metal thread, trying to tie us down. The strands were easy enough to break at first, but there were so many of them, and the spiders just kept coming. I kicked one away from Annabeth's leg, and its pincers took a chunk out of my new surf shoe. Grover hovered above the pool in his flying sneakers, trying to pull the net loose, but it wouldn't budge. Think, I told myself, just think. The tunnel of love entrance was under the net. We could use it as an exit, except that it was blocked by a million robot spiders. <sighs> Fourteen. The loudspeaker called. Water, I thought. Where does this ride's water come from? And then I saw them. Huge water pipes behind the mirrors where the spiders had come from. And up above the net, next to the one of the cupids, a glass-windowed booth that must be the controller's station. Grover! I yelled. Get into the booth. Find the on switch. Quick! B -b 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 Do it! It was a crazy hope, but it was our only chance. The spiders were all over the prow of the boat now. Annabeth was screaming her head off. I had to get us out of there. Grover was in the controller's booth now, slamming away at the buttons. Five, four, the countdown continued. Grover looked up at me hopelessly, raising his hands. He was letting me know that he'd pushed every button, but still, Nothing was happening. I closed my eyes and thought about waves, rushing water, the Mississippi River. I felt a familiar tug in my gut. I tried to imagine that I was dragging the ocean all the way to Denver. Two and one, zero. <gasps> water exploded out of the pipes. It roared into the pool, sweeping away the spiders. I pulled Annabeth into the seat next to me and fastened the seatbelt just as the tidal wave slammed into our boat. Over the top, whisking spiders away, dousing us completely, but not capsizing us. The boat turned, lifted in the flood, and spun in circles around the whirlpool. The water was full of short, circulating, circuiting spiders. Some of them smashing against the pool's concrete wall with such force that they burst. Spotlights glared down at us. The Cupid cams were rolling live to Olympus. But I could only concentrate on controlling the boat. I willed it to ride the current, to keep away from the wall. Maybe it was my imagination, but the boat seemed to respond. At least it didn't break into a million pieces. 
We spun around one last time, the water level now almost high enough to shred us against the metal net. Then the boat's nose turned toward the tunnel as we walked through the dark. Annabeth and I held tight, both of us screaming as the boat shot curls and hugged corners and took 45 degree plunges past pictures of Romeo and Juliet and a bunch of other Valentine's Day stuff. Then we were out of the tunnel, the night air whistling through our hair as the boat barreled straight towards the exit. If the ride had been in working order, we would have sailed off a ramp between the golden gates of love and splashed down safely into an exit pole. But there was a problem. The gates of love were chained. Two boats had been washed out the tunnel before us and were piled against the barricade, one submerged, the other cracked in half. Unfasten your seatbelt, I yelled to Annabeth. <gasps> Are you crazy? Unless you want to get smashed to death. I strapped Aries' shield to my arm. We're going to have to jump for it. My idea was simple <laughs> and insane. As the boat struck, we would use its force like a springboard to jump to the gate. We'd I'd heard of people surviving car crashes that way, getting thrown 30, 40, 50 feet from an accident. With luck, we would land in the pool. Annabeth seemed to understand. She gripped my hand as the gates got closer. On my mark, I said, no. And I'll stop there. So thanks for joining in, guys. And yes, I left you on a cliffhanger because I want you to tune in. Till next time. This is the end of this YouTube video go ahead and click on the next Vimeo video link to get the rest of your grammar and math lessons for the day. Thank you.